the studio is coming on, but I had to give up for the rest of the day because I accidentally put my foot in paint. Yeah, yeah. Hello, this video is sponsored by BritBox, the premier streaming service for Britain's most beloved TV shows. I'm Lawrence Brown, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to size, specifically the size of our countries. Speaking of size, I'd love to one day reach a million subscribers, so if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. Just recently, I was doing some of the never-ending chores around the house when I started to think about maps. Now don't worry, this is just something that happens to me from time to time. For instance, I might be having a shower and out of nowhere I'll suddenly think something like, "Oh, the US state of Virginia looks exactly like an Imperial Star Destroyer slightly. And I know what you're thinking, "Ooh, Lawrence, why would a British person care about the shape of US states? And the answer to that is twofold. Number one, I am in fact a US citizen these days. And number two, I've no idea. What I do know is that it all started a long time ago in a country far, far away. Long-time fans, dare we even say die-hard fans of this channel will know that as a kid I was absolutely obsessed with A, maps, and B, maps of the United States. Yes, 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 you've all heard the story about how I accidentally stole this book from my English school library when I was about 12. What you haven't heard is that there was in fact another book that I read just as obsessively at about the same age, and that book is The Picture Atlas of the World. And as a kid, it was a very good way to learn all of the world capitals. But there was one country that piqued my interest more than any other, and that was the micronation of Tuvalu. But also the United States of America. And my interest in the US was so palpable at the time that I even came up with an order in which I'd visit all of the 50 states. And I do remember thinking, as a lot of British people tend to do, that, oh, look at that, we could do that in a day. America can't be that massive. And actually, as I sit here looking at this book for the first time in 30 years, I realise that young Lawrence was completely and utterly a little bit stupid. But not entirely. I mean, sure, there might be 11 states larger than the UK. The Great Lakes combined might be able to say the same, and it might take two whole days to drive from San Francisco to New York without stopping. But as a kid who just saw shapes on a page, I didn't have any sense for any of this. And under the right context, neither do I, the human version of Lawrence. Let me explain. Yes, America is massive, and it can take a hundred million years just to drive through one state. But sometimes there are cheat codes for these things. For instance, about 20 years ago, I did get to visit the state of Maine, but this was all part of a whirlwind vacation in which I started in New York City. But once we'd seen that big statue with the book and the torch, Statue of Liberty, my girlfriend suggested, why don't we go up to the state of Maine? Because that's where I'm from and you can meet my family. That was daunting. My only question at the time was, excitedly, how many states do we pass through on the way? New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. That makes five. Five states. Wow. Wow, that's gonna take ages. When you said let's go up there, you do mean by plane, right? Wrong! We're gonna catch Greyhound. And while I never want to take Greyhound again, credit where credit's due, the bus journey took no way near the 48 hours that I predicted in my stupid little head. It was actually something like five hours, an hour in each state. Because one of the cheat codes that America has is the East Coast. Because a lot of those states are quite small, certainly smaller than some of those that you'd encounter west of the Mississippi. And so with this being my first grown-up experience of America, it reinforced this idea that you could see the whole country in a day. I've now lived here for 15 years. I've since learned that if you took the Grand Canyon and put it in England, you could stretch it all the way from Brighton to Liverpool. But that doesn't stop this really jarring feeling that you get when you drive through multiple states in five minutes. Another example that happened to me just two years ago when I visited Pennsylvania for the first time. My wife and I spent hours and hours and hours and hours of car time driving through the state of Pennsylvania before arriving in Philadelphia. But just toward the end of this vacation, we made a little detour to go and see some friends in Baltimore. And I was really excited about this because I'd get to check off an entirely new state that I'd never visited before. Not Maryland, Delaware. That's right, as we're driving along, oh, look at that. Welcome to Delaware. Just to make it official, we stopped off in Wilmington, hopped back in the car, got on the road, and within what seemed like 20 seconds, but was probably 15 minutes, we then saw a sign that said, Welcome to Maryland. Bye, Delaware. 
See you later. And you're probably watching this and thinking, yeah, that is a cheat code, Lawrence. Everybody knows that the states up in that eastern corridor are much smaller. Is that all you've got? No. Of course it's not. I'm British. I come from a long line of people whose detective work requires multiple sources of evidence and catchphrases. But it doesn't take a detective <laughs> to work out that the best British detectives are on Britbox. Whether it's Idris Elba as Luther in the highly acclaimed series of the same name, Douglas Henshaw as Jimmy Perez in Shetland, or Brenda Blethyn as DCI Vera Stanhope in Vera. Britbox is definitely the place to put all of your cares aside and become a literal armchair detective, right? I bet my wife absolutely loves it when I say things like, I bet it was the sister who did it, and I'm always wrong. I wasn't wrong though when I said, hey, look, the master from Doctor Who is back in another series of great Grace. He doesn't play the master, that would be mental. He plays Detective Superintendent Roy Grace, solving mysteries in a seaside resort that I mentioned earlier called Brighton. Anyway, you can start streaming this title today, as well as your other favourite British shows via your smartphone, tablet, desktop, Chromecast, Apple TV or Roku device, as well as LG and Samsung smart TVs. Head to BritBox.com slash Lost in the Pond and use the promo code Lost in the Pond when signing up for a monthly subscription and you'll get 50% off your first month month. The link is also in my description below. I got one word for you. Panhandles, right? That is one word. Yep. Panhandles. And my British audience is probably thinking, why is he talking about kitchen implements? I'm not. America has this phenomenon just built into its geography called panhandles, right? That's when you have a strip of land within a state's border that's shaped somewhat like a panhandle. And they're really long and protruding. And you're probably thinking, if they're really long and protruding, doesn't that sort of undermine the premise of this video? And I can see where you're coming from with that hypothetical question, but my actual answer is just good. Because it's not about the length of the panhandle, and that's not a euphemism. It's about the width. Because these panhandles are quite sleek, you might find yourselves enacting the panhandle cheat code in which you drive through multiple states in a very short amount of time. This is something that happened to me in Idaho. Actually, let me rephrase that. It half happened to me in Idaho and the other half occurred in a dream sequence that never came to fruition. Basically, even though those states that are west of the Mississippi are absolutely gigantic, there is a route that means that your vehicle could be in the state of Washington, Idaho and Montana within the short space of an hour and a half. The Montana part was the dream sequence. I never got there. And that might not seem too weird for those of you who know how Idaho is shaped, but I take that as valid. A weirder one for me, which my head just can't wrap its head around, is further south, right? Texas, famously the second largest state in America. You're driving through it, let's say from Houston all the way up into the Texas Panhandle. The Texas Panhandle is notable for being a large rectangle consisting of many smaller rectangles. What could be more American than that? But you're driving along the second biggest state in America and it just seems to take forever. But then you end up in the small town of Stratford, Texas. And this is a quite delicious place to be because you find yourself about to take advantage of the absolute mother of Panhandle warp whistles. But that warp whistle isn't the Texas Panhandle, it is the much coveted Oklahoma a panhandle. Basically, from Stratford, Texas, there is a route to Elkhart, Kansas that magically takes you through five massive states in about three hours. Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, Colorado, and Kansas. So, who says the West is big? And in hindsight, I bet Thelma and Louise are kicking themselves for not checking that off their list. And finally, one other cheat code that makes America seem like a country that you could visit in one day pertains to circles. And I can hear you right now. Lawrence, you previously told us that America is entirely made up of rectangles and that there can be no deviation from this system. Well, yeah, but that's why these are cheat codes. One pretty famous cheat code that involves circles can be found at the center of four states, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. Because at that very spot, there's a touristy intersection in which the borders of all four states meet and you can run a circle around it in a matter of seconds. Cool, that's the gimmicky one. My favorite one is located a bit closer to where I live. This is what I call the pinwheel state. That's where you start in Cairo, yes, Cairo, Illinois. Drive down to Blytheville, Blytheville, Arkansas, taking in Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Missouri, and Arkansas, all within the space of two and a half hours, or half an hour per state. Not sure there are too many tourist hotspots along that route, but if you are willing to add another hour to your journey, you could visit the place where 
Kentucky gets separated from the rest of Kentucky. Anyway, I hope that this video was helpful to anybody else that is in the niche business of racking up states as quickly as possible. Of course, you could just not do this and spend some quality time in those states. I'm just here for the facts. I'm Lawrence Brown. You can follow me on Twitter at Lost in the Pond US, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that I don't have to. And since I mentioned it, I highly recommend watching my visit to Pennsylvania in 2021. And finally, a big thanks to all of my patrons who I talk to about this kind of stuff on my weekly secret live streams. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so today at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.